We've got here on the Moms Without Capes podcast, Laura Mickler. Welcome to the show, Laura. Thank you for having me. So Laura is a branch leader and mortgage loan originator with Movement Mortgage, which sounds comp- complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not. I do I do mortgages. That's, that's it. Yep. <laughs> okay. So she brings over nine years of experience in the mortgage industry. Her calm and caring approach sets her apart and she goes above and beyond to ensure that her clients feel comfortable and confident during the mortgage pro- process. Moreover, Lara believes in cultivating a healthy work-life balance and finds joy in exploring new destinations and practicing mindfulness through yoga. Today, Lara and I will be chatting all about the importance of slowing down and taking time for yourself, especially when you're juggling a demanding job along with motherhood. So before we dive into slowing down, let's take yeah. a minute and just, I'd like you to share more about your journey and what brought you to be where you are today. Sure. I'd be happy to do that. Um, as you said, I'm a mortgage lender. So the last three years in that industry have been absolutely crazy. If you have been involved at all in real estate, you kind of know that it's been a high, you know, uh, people need things yesterday when they're, when they're needing things. So figuring out that balance has been really important to me. Um, I actually come from a background of non the nonprofit world. So that was kind of a transition about nine years ago when I moved into mortgages, but I still tried to bring a lot of that nonprofit energy, I would say. So the kind of that caring calmness, um, that sort of a thing. And, yeah, that's really not common, weirdly, in the mortgage industry. It's it's a very personal process. And I, I recognize that for people. It's your home. It's where you're going to raise your family. There's a lot of emotions that go into it. Even though I am strictly a numbers on paper, credit score kind of job, I feel like you have to infuse some of that kindness um, and some of that, you know, with everything. But, um, but I live in the state of Indiana, so it's not where you think is like the hotbed of real estate or anything like that. But um, we definitely have, you know, it's been been a crazy couple of years. So it's really forced me to kind of self evaluate a lot of the balance type of things that I have going on in my life. And yeah, that's kind of kind of how I got to here for sure. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So you have gotten, you know, through that nonprofit door. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Do you find that it's a lot, a lot different? It actually isn't. So when I worked for non, uh, my last job in the nonprofit world, I did fundraising. So Mm -hmm. I found that being a mortgage lender is actually very similar. And that sounds kind of odd to say, but it's really the same things. It's following the rules. It's making people feel comfortable. It's knowing that sometimes you're talking to people that are older, wiser, and richer than you are. And so how do you approach them, you know, with respect, but still get the job done kind of a thing. And so yeah. it actually translated strangely well <laughs> into the the movement into mortgage for sure. Do you like doing mortgages? I do. I do. It's, it's challenging. And I, you know, I tell people it's never going to get easier to get a mortgage. They're going to constantly keep changing what you can do and the guidelines and all those kinds of things. But I, I kind of like that challenge as a mom. It's wonderful because in my job, I'm a hundred percent commission, which, you know, I don't work, I don't get paid, but at the same time I have some flexibility. So I've not had to miss field trips. I've not had to miss band concerts, all those kinds of things, which has been a wonderful kind of balance um, with the, with the flexibility of the position for sure. Yeah. So it's a good job to have as a mom. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Like we, we all need that flexibility. It definitely works. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And so I, you know, it's one of those things I tell my husband all the time. I don't know how people, you know, make it. So my hat's off to anybody. If you have a, you have to be in a nine to five five kind of a thing, because I know it's very, very difficult, and especially coming out of the pandemic and some of those types of things. I know we were all Mm. at the end of our (laughs) patience and kind of making it work as best we can for sure. One of the things that I find challenging with, with, with having the flexibility is continually having to shift around. Yes. Like I feel like it has its pros and it has its cons. Like it does. See, like every day, like, okay, well, I can do this. Like I can rearrange this to get this. Like you're constantly like having mm-hmm. to like do this puzzle in your head every single day to like make things work. Yes. Whereas like if you had that nine to five job, like the, the answer would be no. Like I can't do that. Right. No. 
<laughs> right. Yes. There, there is no, I mean, you have to figure out your, your blocking of your time for sure, mm. because it's in, you know, in my poor children, they're trained. Yeah. Mom's phone might ring at dinner and we just have to kind of be quiet for a right. few minutes while she takes a call. And, you know, and I have to weigh personally, is it time to take this call? Can I let it go to voicemail? Mm. And it's, you know, it's hard yeah. because people are sometimes very impatient. And so it's, if I don't answer the phone right now, they're going to go to the next person down the road. And then right. that gets into a whole other discussion of, well, is that who I really want as a customer? And, you know, some of those types of things, but yeah. it's, it's definitely challenging. Yeah. So with this whole idea of slowing down, like mm-hmm. when you found that you, like, when were you faced with, okay, this is something I intentionally have to do because you yeah. felt like you were on the verge of burnout or you felt like what, tell us yeah. about that. I think um, I have two examples of that. One, um, I had a pretty major surgery about five years ago. And while I was recovering from that, and again, I use recovery loosely because I was still kind of taking phone calls from my bed and some of those types of things. But I really, my body was kind of calling for some sort of stretching, some sort of exercise. So I really decided to get back into my yoga practice at that point in time. And that led me to um, completing my 200 hours of yoga teacher training because I don't do anything halfway. So that's part of, (laughs) if I'm doing something, I'm going all in. So I decided I, you know, and I really enjoy teaching and, but with that, if, if anybody listening or watching has ever been through yoga teacher training, I feel like there's kind of a before and after for your life with that, because you really do become very aware of your body, very aware of your mind, all those kinds of things. Um, so that really was kind of one transition. And, and I was actually able to go off of some of my anxiety medication and really heal myself at some, at that point in time. And I kind of backslid a little bit with that and kind of got out of the the habit and had some personal things happen last year and that kind of thing. So I would say actually right now, as we're speaking, I'm in the middle of fighting some major, major burnout. And I think it just really, and I can't blame my job totally. Um, I've had a lot of things going on in my personal life with my, uh, we had some deaths in our family and that sort of a thing. So, um, but my body was screaming at me to take a break. And I think um, a lot of times our bodies are telling us things we don't want to listen to, or we, you know, don't think we can at that (laughs) moment until something dramatic happens. And so I think the importance of that slowdown is to avoid that major thing that happens. And so in, in mindfulness, I feel like is something people think it has, it has to be an hour long yoga class. Mm. It can literally be standing up from your desk and taking five deep breaths. It can just, you know, waking up in the morning and not immediately reaching for your phone or, you know, just some of those types of things I feel like are easier to kind of slow yourself down a little bit. Like, you know, let yourself wake up before you start assaulting yourself with social media and emails right. and all the other things that we do. And, and I'm just as guilty of it. I'm not going to pretend that I'm sitting here on my, you know. Oh, shoot. Yeah. So, you know, I am not sitting here that I have all the answers or I'm sitting on my golden throne or anything of that nature. But, you know, I think it, I notice a huge difference in myself when I take the time to slow down, take the time. And, and I need that with my stressful job, because if, you know, there's nothing more stressful than someone saying, if we don't close on this house by next Friday, I'm homeless. Like that is a whole other level of stress that, you know, is, is there and is real. So, yeah. Right. Right. So in order to avoid that total burnout, you're recognizing the things that you can do such as mindfulness to be able to prevent yourself from going out, from sliding all the way into, to the point of no return. Absolutely. (laughs) Or it's harder to climb out of. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So aside from um, like, what what do you think are some roadblocks that have Mm -hmm. kept you or people, other women that, you know, that have stopped them from being able to slow down. Mm -hmm. I think we, as women struggle, and this is like my soapbox, so you can stop me at any time if I (laughs) go on too long, but, but we struggle. And it's that, that, that adage on the airplane that you have to put your oxygen mask on first. And especially as moms, um, you know, we would, we would all do anything for our little people. And sometimes we let that overtake 
the little people are fine if you take 10 minutes for yourself or, you know, I, I, I use that example. So my boys are nine and my oldest will turn 13. So he'll be 13 by the time this airs and everything. But, um, it took me probably until my youngest was six before I felt like I was Laura again and not Milo's mm -hmm. mom, Rowan's mom. So I think that as women, like we just have to recognize that, that everything is a season. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we really have to, we really have to work. And I know we all do not need another thing to work at, but really to work at, um, you know, some of those strategies, you know, the, the whole adage that no is a complete sentence. That's very hard for us as women because we're, and that was me last year before I hit my huge burnout. I was taking care of my dad. I was taking care of my family. And luckily I have a very supportive husband that's, you know, wonderful at kind of picking up the pieces here at home and that kind of thing. But then, you know, we have the mom guilt that comes in. Am I not doing enough for my kids? Am I not, am I not, am I not kind of a thing? And so just letting some of that go, that was really good advice. When I became a first time mom, somebody said to me, lower your standards and then lower them further. And then you'll be okay as a, as right. a mom. And, right. um, and I think that that is, that's true. We just have this, I, this, the ideal that we have are all striving for is unattainable. And so right. just giving yourself grace and figuring out, um, you know, you can not be everything to everyone. And, um, and I think too, I, my big phrase is stop the glorification of busy. We all don't need to be busy all the time. And, you know, I hear where I live and I don't know if it's this way for other people, I, an example of this, my children have not really shown any interest in playing sports. We play recreational soccer and my oldest plays golf in the summertime and that's it. But we are in a very sports heavy area. And so it's like, okay, am I doing my child a disservice? No, because there's that, those families are spending all of their money on traveling for baseball or football or whatever the case may be. Our family is choosing to travel. So, you know, it's, it, you don't have to compare apples and oranges all the time. And, you know, and yeah, it's selfishly, that's great that we all get to travel instead of sitting at a ball diamond every weekend. But if that's what your family enjoys, then then do that thing. And I think there's right. a lot of, you just have to let go of a lot of the guilt and things like that, um, you know, with all of it. Yeah. You said a few great things and I just want to kind of yeah absolutely please is, do right like the the idea of busyness being a badge of honor like mm -hmm. we, we tie our worth to our productivity yes. and it keeps us on this whole cycle of overwhelm that we right. struggle to escape from right because yeah. it leads straight to burnout yet we as a society value that that productivity and that hustle right. culture and yes and it yes. really is going against that to say no right like right. that was a complete sense like saying no we we're not going to put up with this, but right. it's like knowing your own values and feeling secure in like, this is our mm -hmm. choice as a family. This is my choice as a mom or as right. a woman that I'm going to do this differently. Exactly. And, and yeah. And being able to stand strong by that, which takes confidence. And it does. And I think part of what I've realized with all of that, when you can step back from some of the busy, you give yourself space to grow. You're really being busy really hinders that ability to grow. And it really kind of allows you the space of, is this what I really want? You know, if I'm, if you're in the middle of like a career change or, you know, something like that, it's hard to evaluate that if you're busy. And I think that that, and, mm -hmm. and I, to your point too, uh, for our culture, it drives me crazy when you ask someone, how are you? Yeah. And the answer to that is busy. Yeah. That's not a feeling, <laughs> but we've almost turned it into a feeling and, and a right. state of being. And I think that that is, is so huge. And, and I, like I said, I'm not up here on a golden throne that I'm not, you know, it's, it's very hard and it's yeah. the culture that we live in, no matter where you live, this is going to affect you a little bit because it's just the way the world is. So I, you know, I, I fully want to recognize that it's hard. It's not the easiest. Yeah, and it goes there. back to the whole idea of like that there, there's seasons to life. There's seasons yes. of even like being a mom, like there's seasons that are going to be busier than others. Mm -hmm. it's seasons where the busier seasons are those times where you really need to be more intentional about slowing down, right? Like fighting against that busyness. Whereas other times, like it's just a slower pace of life or yeah. just that slower season where, you know, 
we just kind of have to continually adapt. Like not only, but we kind of go back to the beginning of our conversation, like having, yes. like, how are we going to do this? You know, what's going on today? Yeah. How are we going to manage all of that? But right. like really just that season of life and being mm-hmm. able to like, okay, I have to do more yoga or I've got to make sure that I am putting pauses in my day in order to create that life that I want to be living and to be able to not buy into that hustle culture because then that's where that exhaustion and that overwhelm. Exactly. That that's where that lives. Exactly. So what, how do you manage because you have been intentional about slowing down Mm -hmm. How do you still manage to stay on top of it all? Yeah. Well, I would say I don't always. So okay. I put no, that out there. Be honest. I'm just going to own that straight, straight forward. Lower I mean, their standards. And you're yeah, like, oh, and, I'm and I think, and I, I'm in the process of kind of evaluating um, something that I was doing. They had given me kind of this four, you put things in your life into four categories. So you have to automate certain things. You have to delegate certain things. You have to delete certain things from your life. And then you have to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And so trying to figure out, you know, just little ways of how can I make this easier on myself? You know, automatic bill pay, bam, it's automated. It's done, you know, and whatever checks and balances you put in with yourself on that, that's great. You know, delegate, Oh my gosh, I had my husband start helping me, you know, drop off things when I have to mail them or, you know, just those little things that give you 15 minutes here and there are going to help you kind of take back your day. Now there's something, you know, no one can shower for me. So I have to figure out when that, you know, when that works. And, and I think, you know, again, talking about the seasons of life, things are going to change a little bit, you know, when you have little kids at home, they are probably early risers. And so you have to plan your day around that 6am wake up call that you have. Mm -hmm. My kids are now older and then almost in the teen stage. So on Saturday mornings, I can sit down, enjoy some quiet time, drink my tea, do those kinds of things. So really, you know, knowing that it's not forever, but kind of working, you know, if you're a person that likes to get up early, um, you know, make that your most productive time of the day. So just, I am, I like to say middle of the day is my time to shine. So I know that, Hey, I can get up about seven, slowly work into my day and then really hit it hard middle of the day, enjoy my evening, you know, that kind of a thing. So you just have to know yourself, I think, and know, that it may change. And, you know, and Mm. I think the other thing that, and maybe I get into this a little bit too much, but I'm always trying to chase the next thing. You know, I'm on, I'm searching on Pinterest. How do I, you know, how do I organize this? Do I need a bullet journal? Do If those things work for you, that's great, but you don't need all of them and not all of them are going to speak to you. So again, don't overwhelm yourself with, you know, the the tools a little bit too. just kind of do what feels (laughs) exactly do what feels, you know, you don't need 18 journals if they just sit on your desk and collect dust, you know, trying to figure out how that works for you. And, you know, as much as I don't want to be that person, I'm sitting here at my desk with all these little post-it notes and (laughs) that's just how my brain works. And I've had to accept that. So, yeah. 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 So do you have any final advice? I think um, just, I I just want to say to any mom, like you're doing a good job. The fact that you think you're not doing a good job means that you are doing a great job. And so I think we all just need to remember that. And one thing I didn't talk about, but I think is so important is to find your circle of people, um, whoever that may be. And it may just be two people. It may be two best friends that you can text in the middle of the chaos saying, I think I'm going to scream and you need them to say, then scream sister, you know, whatever, whatever it is, <laughs> your people that are going to be that support for you. And that kind of understand where you're coming from. And it may be, you know, maybe family members, it may be, you know, it's going to look different for every person, but make sure you have that support system too. Yeah. Super important. Yeah. Super yeah. important. Sure. So Laura, what do you do for fun? Yeah. Well, I would say we travel is probably what we, what we do for fun the most. And we travel quite a bit. Um, Where was the coolest place you've been? 
The coolest place I've been. Um, so my husband and I do try to go to the UK once a year. And again, we've made that a priority. I know how ridiculous that sounds to say out loud, but um, that that's probably the ultimate coolest place. But right now I'm actually working on visiting all 50 states before I turn 40. So I'll turn 40 in 2024 and I have one more state left. I have to visit Alaska. So that's, <laughs> I had mentioned to you that I was in Montana. That's trying to get all of them knocked yeah. off my list. But yeah, I've had a, a few cool surprise states there um in that journey so that's been really what's your favorite state so far so far I really love New Hampshire and I don't know if it's because I live in Indiana and it's very flat here and just Mm -hmm. the mountains were so I mean I've been to lots of mountains but for some reason New Hampshire just really resonated with me so shout out to New Hampshire for (laughs) sure yeah and do you have a book that you can recommend to us I, one book that I've been um, really, I've actually read and reread, and I don't normally do that. It's called We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers. Oh, I've read that. Yes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Rachel, I adore her. Um, but it just is this, this idea of, you know, kind of the narrative that we as women are told that, you know, if you want more money, you need to not drink your lattes. You need to not right. have a manicure, you know, and that narrative is stupid and I don't care for it. So, but this, you know, her, her idea is that, no, we can just make more money as women. And I think, you know, that really, and even if you're not setting out to be a millionaire, I think it's just really good to kind of empower women to really know what their financial life looks like for sure. Right. Right. Yeah. That's like, that was a great book. I agree. Uh, I love it very, very much. Yes. So Laura, where can listeners find you? Yeah, um, I am on Instagram. So I have a podcast as well. It's called Deadbeats, Divorces and Dividends. And it's really a woman's guide to real estate, finance and life because that's it's all connected for sure. Um, so Instagram is where you can find me. It's D3 Finance Pod on Instagram. And then that links to all my other socials and, and my website and all the good things. So yeah. And all of, all of Laura's information is going to be found in the show notes of today's episode. So definitely go check that out. Go listen to her podcast and all of that. Thanks so much for coming on the show today, Laura. Yeah, this was so great. I appreciate it.